with this video, apologies in advance if I've already covered a lot of the stuff in this video. I did have a look through the channel, I couldn't see this content on there, so as far as more I haven't covered it, but I get the weird feeling I've talked about this before. So, what I wanted to talk about in this video is TICS and TIMS, which are two acronyms and they stand for Toxic Industrial Chemicals or Toxic Industrial Materials. So, TICS and TIMS is one of those things where there's lots of dodgy information floating about on them and I don't want to be a Dunning-Kruger, so as I was saying, I'm not a massive person with a massive knowledge on chemistry but I think I've learned enough that you can see where lots of people just say lots of false information on them so I'll try and present the evidence as best as I can tell about it and then do your own research and come up with what you can understand yourself but don't believe the people who just start rattling off about ticks and tims to sound smart in conversations on CBRN warfare um, you know as in a way in excuse of trying to get their point across so let's take a look at toxic industrial chemicals then so there's lots of people online who will say things like you need special filters for toxic industrial chemicals because these are different from military warfare chemicals and military warfare filters like this are only designed to deal with military warfare chemicals therefore you need to get a special tick or tim filter and know when to use it I see this used a lot against people who are preppers where somebody's saying you shouldn't prep for um, any kind of chemical disaster because you won't know what the chemicals are and you can't get a filter that will be just right well you can because you can get like the ABEC and the combination filters that are designed to work against everything to a reasonable degree so let's look into ticks then shall we so toxic industrial chemicals as I said now here's the funny thing and this, this is the bit right that might surprise some people Every kind of military warfare gas is a toxic industrial chemical, except for mustard gas and other blister agents, and nerve agents. But I think a lot of pesticides will still be classed as toxic industrial chemicals anyway, so it's only when they're proper G or N series nerve agents that they wouldn't be classed as toxic industrial chemicals anymore. Everything else, sort of phosgene, chlorine, or things like that, they are all toxic industrial chemicals. So, when people say that regular mask filters do not protect you from toxic industrial chemicals, they are lying, or they just don't know any better. So, there is some truth to what they're saying, and I'll get into that, but this is kind of a historical thing, not a modern thing. So, let me get the filter off of this mask. So, this is an old Draeger filter, and as far as I'm aware, if we used modern terminology on it, this would only be an ABE P3 filter so it's probably most likely got a P3 filter in there, it looks like a HEPA filter from looking at it from underneath, so that should be P3, and it's got charcoal in it. Now the charcoal should absorb most chemicals, uh, most vapours, but early filters tended to not be impregnated much, if they did impregnate them with anything it would be chromium, and chromium was used to just be more efficient at getting rid of certain chemicals, I think mostly ammonia is what chromium was used for. So, for a very long time, military filters were ABE, so organic vapour, inorganic vapour, and acidic vapours. They didn't guarantee protection from ammonia, which is an industrial chemical. So, the reason for this is, a lot of the time I think it was because there wasn't enough research on what they should impregnate them with, and that's when chromium was discovered to be quite good against ammonia and some other things. And it was also a cheapness factor. Lots of militaries took the very cheap option of buying sort of multitask filters that didn't do everything and then buying another cheaper filter that could do the other things rather than paying a decent amount of money to get a filter that could do everything. Also bear in mind the more gases a filter can deal with the bigger the filter tends to get which is why it's not particularly great if you want soldiers to be wearing a super heavy big filter on their mask. So that kind of makes sense. The issue is if you're fighting an enemy that's going to be using chemical weapons and they've got a large chemical arsenal and they know that you've got filters that work against some of the vapours and filters that work against some of the other vapours but can't do both at the same time. They will hit you with two types of chemical weapons at once and kill all your troops. If they, assuming they know that, but you know that's quite obvious military intelligence in some stages. So that's why most military filters now are full ABEC filters. They sometimes are only A1, P, B1, you know E1, K1, and then the P3. It's always a P3 because you need particulate level three for sort of micro protection and everything like that. But the point is that 
Most modern filters now offer ammonia protection because it was obviously realised to be a massive glaring flaw that you know you wouldn't offer ammonia protection on the same filter as you did everything else. Now there are still more chemical groups that aren't covered by ABEC and modern military filters, which again a tick and tim filter probably is you know that's the point of it. However, again, I still know that lots of militaries don't issue those filters out anyway. So that's regardless of the point where they say, well, the military knows best because they have the filters for that. Lots of them don't have the, um, I'm trying to think, well, it's, there's Mercury is one of the other ones. They're the red band normally on ABEC type filters. Um, and then there again, a different symbol. I think Mercury might be the NG one. What I'm going to do while this video is going on is I'm going to put up the ABEC chart so you can see what I'm on about. There's also nitrous oxide. That's another one that's not done by regular filters. But the thing you have to understand with filters is while you impregnate them to make them more efficient at removing those chemicals, if you have enough charcoal in a big enough filter it will kind of do it anyway. It's why the old Soviet style filters like this, um, you know the Warsaw Pack big coffee can and canister filters, those are really good at it because they had so much more charcoal in compared to a filter like this. So, and if you look at British World War II and most World War II filters, the sort of box respirator kind of filters, they were actually really good at that because if you get a really big filter, because if you think the coffee can filter is probably like this times three going down, two or three times the height of this, you fit a lot more charcoal in, that gives you a lot more space to adsorb chemicals. So if the charcoal isn't particularly efficient at adsorbing ammonia, for example, if you have enough charcoal, it will do it. So what you need to understand is most filters can filter everything it's just they don't do it properly efficiently and if there's a large volume of that gas it's fatal if you can't get all of it out before it gets through so what do I want you to take away from this video it's that toxic industrial chemicals for the most part are lots of warfare chemicals that you know chemicals that have been used in warfare chlorine and phosgene are obviously some of the first chemical weapons ever used and they're definitely toxic industrial chemicals so don't let anybody have you on where they say you know military filters do not stop toxic industrial chemicals for the most part they do but then there are some chemicals that aren't they aren't don't fish uh, efficiently adsorb generally i think it's calculated that the risk of these being used is very low that's why the filters don't do it again if you want to spend a load of money you can buy the one that's ABEC and then with all the other letters on it for mercury and sort of nitrogen oxide and all those sort of things that aren't covered by the ABEC bit um, but that will be a very bulky heavy filter and you'll end up needing to use it more like a coffee can filter you'll have to use it with a hose in a bag because you can't really put a filter that might be you know, up to a kilo in weight on the side of a mask very efficiently so that's what I want you to take away is that ABEC filters and all those for the most part are good enough. Modern CBRN filters generally are ABEC filters depending on what you can find because obviously it will depend you know what you're looking for and whatever for yourself but yeah don't be conned by the people that are saying no there's it's useless to get a gas mask for any sort of protection from chemicals because you won't know what the chemical is in advance and you need a specific chemical for each a specific filter for each kind of chemical which is wrong if you get a good combination filter, the probability that you'll protect yourself from the vapour is very high as compared to, I guess, what they're going to pretend that's a better idea is to sit around with a chemical testing kit waiting for the result to come in so you can then pick out the filter you want and put on. So there you go. Toxic industrial chemicals, TIC, TIMs, TICs and TIMs. Um, for the most part, they are the majority of warfare chemicals anyway, it's only mustard gas and lewisite blister agents and nerve agents that are not technically on the tick or tim list.